Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, July 13th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. And we do have a patch now for Kaseya VSA. The patch was delayed a little bit, uh, but it is available now for the software as a service product, as well as for the on-premise product. Now, the patch does fix all of uh, the issues that were disclosed to Kaseya. And some of these issues, again, were used in these ransomware attacks. But uh, the patch also comes with a caveat. Uh, first of all, if you apply the patch or once you apply the patch you definitely should apply the patch you need to reset your passwords and that's because part of a vulnerability being fixed here is a credential leak and I believe passwords are now also stored more securely so better hashed than they were in the old version there are also a number of functionality differences in this new version now I believe and that's just for me scanning the advisory that these changes are due to the patches so they're actually addressing these vulnerabilities overall of course it's never a good idea to sort of mix up security fixes and functional changes in particular for a very important patch like this one that people should roll out as quickly as possible. Cassia also made available for its on-premise customer a hardening and best practices guide and recommends that you deploy this before you actually deploy the patch. Probably the two most important parts here of uh, the hardening guide is first of all, make sure that the server is isolated from the network. And uh, secondly, make sure the server isn't already compromised and they offer a number of tools uh, to check for that. And given what we have heard is you should pretty much assume that every exposed Kaseya VSA server was compromised within a couple of hours or so of the initial uh, news. So yes, uh, your system is probably compromised. Well, with uh, Kaseya behind us, we have new vulnerabilities from Solar Winds to worry about, but this time not in Solar Winds main product. Instead, it's in the Surfview file transfer or SSH server. Surfview used to be a separate company. Solar Winds uh, purchased it, so it's a separate uh, product that sort of got inter integrated into the Solar Winds uh, ecosystem, and it does suffer from a remote code execution vulnerability that, according to Microsoft, is already being exploited. So if you're using uh, this uh, Surfview component for file transfer, then patch now and also, again, as usual, verify that you do what you can do in order to limit network access to whatever services you have enabled. And low-cost T-Mobile reseller Mint Mobile apparently suffered a breach that led to a limited number of phone numbers from Mint Mobile to be transferred to other carriers. Of course, uh, this can then be used uh, to uh, break into two-factor authentication protected systems if you are using SMS or a phone call as your second factor. The kind of uh, porting or uh, SIM uh, cloning attacks have been quite uh, popular, but of course, they're always sort of limited in scale based on the need to port numbers individually, often social engineer or even bribe operators at various uh, phone companies. In this case, it was possible to port multiple numbers using the information that was disclosed as part of this breach. Now, Mint Mobile doesn't say how many subscribers were affected, but they say all subscribers have been notified and the activity took place over the weekend, June 8th through 10th. If you were notified by Mint Mobile that your account was subject to this takeover, take a look at any accounts that uh, you protect uh, with SMS as a second factor. Make sure they didn't get breached. Of course, they still need the password and that's why it's so important that you always pick a strong password even for two-factor authentication protected accounts. 
And one of the protection mechanisms that Twitter tried to implement in order to protect users from bots or impersonation attacks is its verified mark, which often is applied to journalists, politicians, and other accounts of note. But apparently, according to one Twitter user, conspirator Nortino, couple of Twitter accounts were approved by mistake. They found a number of accounts that were part of a larger botnet that actually did have uh, the uh, verified mark, even though these accounts uh, had very few followers and uh, no real uh, tweets that actually originated from these accounts. No detailed explanation from Twitter so far, other than uh, that uh, these accounts apparently were approved as verified by mistake. So just another reason to probably get your news from other sources than Twitter. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.